looks like Skeletor half the time. Uh -oh. Oh. Live. Live. Well, good morning, everybody. Nice to see everybody here in your red and blue. Welcome. I'm Alex Flanagan, a 1993 graduate of the University of Arizona. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so I'm celebrating my 30th reunion here this weekend, and I'm so excited that the football team is showing up and giving us a game tomorrow, right? Yes. Excited for that. Well, um, welcome to all of you again. Thank you for being here. I'm joined by President Robert C. Robbins today, by alumna Terry Lundgren, and by uh, my former classmate, sorority sister, and one of my dear friends, Marianne Cracciolo Mago. Um, a lot to tell you about today, so we're here today to share with you some historic and exciting um, news about this university and its future. So I'm gonna turn to our president. Bobby, why don't you kick it off and tell us a little bit more about what we are doing today. Get us started. Well, thank you, Alex, and uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I, I can't see out there. I, I'm assuming there's some press. I, I see a lot of familiar faces, uh, many of whom who were here last night for simply an unbelievable uh, program. Yeah. The speakers that we had were incredibly world-class. Not only are they world-class individuals and scientists and students, but um, just their presentations. Uh, I, I thought I was watching uh, TV, live TV, and, and Alex, uh, I'm sure most people who don't uh, know you personally and know your story uh, recognize you from watching hours and hours of sports uh, broadcasts and, and uh, you know, over a 30-year career, that's just amazing. Being a, a resident of Southern Arizona, welcome home. Thank you. Uh, we were speaking last night uh, about what, what's the name of your town? I forget. Sonoida, Arizona. Sonoida, the, yes. The steakout yes. restaurant. My parents are still there running it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I came from a town I left that had one stoplight. Still has one stoplight. Yeah, we only had a stop sign. Yeah, one stop <laughs> sign. <laughs> still. You got, you got me on that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, your, your career, I, I can remember, uh, you've worked for almost every network. I think ESPN, NBC, NFL Network, you've done Super Bowls, Olympics, and we're just so grateful that you took the time to come back and help us, help us with, this, uh, with this event. Uh, not only today, but you were there last night, and uh, as we were talking about a uh, big, big football game on tomorrow. And uh, I think the team is on a roll, uh, beating two top 20 teams two weeks in a row. Uh, and maybe we can get the trifecta this week, and then we're off to primetime land in uh, Colorado the next week. Oh, awesome. So a lot of excitement going on around homecoming, everyone coming home, and uh, uh, I'm just so thrilled to be here with Marianne and Terry, who were um, just stars last night. But uh, to both of you, thank you so much for co-chairing this campaign. Uh, this is as you know, the largest campaign in university history. And it, and it means so much to me personally that you would say yes. And uh, I just have so much respect for both of you and so thrilled to be here with all three of you on the 109th uh, homecoming weekend for the University of Arizona. So we have a big announcement today. Mm, um, you. you know, it, uh, it, it seems like we, we, uh, we had a big announcement last night. We had a lot of fun in here, but that was sort of our internal family announcement that we're going forward in the public phase of our campaign. Today it's a public announcement and I'm, I'm hoping there'll be some press that'll ask us some questions about it because there are so many exciting things to report about uh, this campaign. But uh, today we're publicly announcing that we're in the uh, the start of our public phase of a $3 billion campaign for the University of Arizona that's going to, yeah. <laughs> Th this is going to be absolutely transformational for the university. Um, I, I want to thank so many people uh, who've made this possible. We're already about... Uh, two-thirds to 70 percent uh, to our target uh, with over two billion dollars already raised um, and I, I actually learned last night in some of the statistics 
from over 128,000 unique donors. So uh, no, no gift is too small and every gift is significant because you're making a gift. Uh, our, the people who love this university, whether they went to University of Arizona or not, uh, are giving because they love this place, because they believe in it. They want to invest in the future of our students, our faculty, our staff, and the infrastructure to, um, to do all the research that uh, needs to be done. But I'll, I'll, I'll just stop. I'm supposed to be reading off of cards or I've memorized them, but I'm, I'm going off script You're Freelancing. Here because I'm, I'm so excited about this campaign and what it can mean uh, to our students. Mostly, uh, as our strategic plan was written, uh, we're focused on student success. And last night, we just heard incredible stories from not only current students, but former students like Dante Loretta. And I don't know if Dante's here today, but he is, uh, he is absolutely uh, a star. Not only is he a star scientist, but um, I don't know, Terry, I think he could be a, you know, a, a CEO or he could yeah. go on TV Guaranteed. and he could do whatever he wants. <laughs> he could do whatever he wants. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so uh, making a difference for someone to be able to come to the university uh, and, and have the chance to realize their hopes and dreams can be made possible through scholarships. We give about $300 million a year in financial aid. We're really focused on raising money for scholarships so that we can free up some of that money that, that we take from tuition revenue to fund students. Um, for researchers, uh, having the startup money to get them started uh, when it's maybe a, a, a wild idea that's a little bit too high risk for most funding agencies, having the startup money to invest in their ideas and then help them uh, uh, to, to go on to get major funding, like, uh, for instance, Ante, I think there, there's a, a donor who's given money for, for the, some of the equipment to analyze the, um, the asteroid uh, rocks that have come back. Um, so it's really, really important what we're doing here, and I couldn't be more proud to, to be part of it and to have you all here to hear about it. Yeah, well, um, so many people, including myself, I know Marianne, have benefited from this great university and really just being able to see the opportunities. I didn't come to school thinking I was going to be on television. I wanted to be uh, an, a pilot like my father was in the Marine Corps and then decided I wanted to be a doctor and I couldn't make it through chemistry, so I switched to media arts <laughs> and here I am. So just to be able to have that exploration is so important. And as you mentioned, it takes a huge village to raise $2 billion and then $3 billion Dollars. So we're doing this under um, the motto of Fuel Wonder. Tell us a little bit more about um, the Fuel Wonder campaign. Well, uh, Wonder, there's a whole story there that I don't have time to tell. I, uh, <laughs> my my initial reaction was I didn't like it. Uh, and, uh, and then it grew on me, and, and I think it's turned out to be an incredible uh, brand for the university. Um, you know, the block A is just the block A, but it's everything behind it. And, and wonder, you know, uh, I, think, I think that we've played with so many uh, iterations of wonder. Wonder you, uh, wonder at university, meaning wonder you, wonder you personally at the university. Wonder makes us, wonder uh, inspires us. You can go on and on and on. Um, and so I think it's been a really successful brand for the university and I'm so appreciative of uh, through the strategic planning process and uh, the creative process to come up with something uh, like this. And I, uh, you know, it's always controversial I, when pe people came up to me and said, I hate that. I don't know what you're <laughs> thinking. Um, but you can't please everybody all the time. But then Fuel Wonder, uh, given that we are the number one without question, there's no debate about this. We're the number one astronomy and lunar, lunar and planetary yeah. uh, spaces program in the country. Uh, it's not even close. And uh, is we, we talk a lot about Dante, but there are other things like the giant Magellan telescope that um, is gonna be the world's largest telescope. And we were talking last night about, if you haven't been on the tour of the mirror lab, um, these mirrors are as big as this part of uh, 
old Bear Down Gym here. How, how about this? They, they did a great job on, on redoing this. But these mirrors that um, for all the giant telescopes in the world are made right under the east yeah. part of our in football the stadium. stadium. Yeah. It's just amazing. And so um, the, the fuel wonder means uh, philanthropy is our fuel. Uh, we need resources. We need money uh, to be able to support these programs, to support our students, support uh, buying, uh, building buildings, buying equipment. Um, and so that's the fuel that's going to help us uh, to reach um, the stratosphere and beyond into uh, the universe. Okay, so that's why these two are here then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Marianne and Terry are the co-chairs of the Fuel Wonder campaign. So Marianne and I met our freshman year um, here at the U of A. We've been <laughs> dear friends ever since. We had much different hairdos back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, back then, though, we were two young women with big dreams of being on television, and we graduated and went our ways. Marianne went to New York City, and I got my first job in television news in a small town in Minnesota. And um, we kind of helped each other throughout that time fuel each other's wonder, if you will. So Marianne, now after a successful career as a television executive where she worked out in Los Angeles, came home to the state of Arizona, and now she is the president and CEO of the Steel Foundation. And I'm so proud of her and what she's accomplished. Um, Terry, who I'm just meeting, and I'm going to stay close to because he has um, a lot of good ties in retails at uh, Macy's <laughs> and Bloomingdale's. Uh, Terry is the retired chairman, CEO of Macy's Inc., um, an incredibly influential figure in the retail space, a champion of this great university, has done so much. Among other th many other things, Terry um, has established, well, I drove by it yesterday. I was uh, driving down Park Avenue and saw a building with your beautiful name on it. Um, you put on a global retailing conference here at the University of Arizona that connects students with executives in the retail space. So important to kind of have those connections. That is in its 27th year um, going on here. So just shows what a great um, commitment that you have made throughout the years to this university. So let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about what's fueling you to take part in this campaign. You mean besides Bobby strong-arming me to, uh, into, <laughs> yes. into doing you're, it? You're so much bigger than I am. I, I can never <laughs> strong-arm you. I, 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 I uh, pleaded. I tried to inspire you, and thank you. You inspired me. That's thank better you. than strong-armed. Uh, but, but seriously, um, I... I I wanted to be a small part of uh, this vision that Bobby had to um, bring this, this university and its students and its faculty you know, to the next level. Um, and I heard the story, I heard you know, about some of the ideas and, and just wanted to be, be part of it. Um, my former company uh, was Macy's Inc., as you mentioned, and we hire hundreds of uh, students from uh, the University of Arizona because this is a great place to, to come, to, to find people who are really interested in our, in our industry. Half of them come from our Lundgren Center, but the other half come from across campus uh, in multiple different spots around the, around the university, but particularly from uh, Eller College that uh, we, we get a lot of students. So, so we had the, the opportunity to support recently a collaborative between the two colleges, the Consumer Sciences College and the, and the business, business College, and um, we thought if we do this right, we will solidify the University of Arizona as the university known with the most talented and the most prepared students to tackle the many opportunities and challenges associated with the uh, retail industry. And we all know there are, are plenty. Uh, but we, want, we, we thought, we, you know, we've got issues today and we're going to have issues tomorrow. And if we can educate these, these students this way by bringing the, 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 the different uh, colleges together, we can accomplish great things. Starts with an outstanding faculty, which we have, it's, and our research, uh, and the willingness to work together uh, to solve problems that we know about and test for potential solutions of some new things. And one of the latest uh, initiatives that we're very excited uh, to, to launch uh, is the Retail uh, Learning uh, Laboratory, which we're building right over at the, at the Consumer Sciences Building right now, and uh, it's very exciting. I walked through it uh, yesterday. Uh, we're going to have virtual reality technology, eye tracking and heat sensing software, cameras, display hardware, uh, and innovative checkout solutions. And our students are going to play a key role in developing and, and, and the best practices and 
and will provide, you know, I think really valuable feedback on improving the shopping experience, uh, you know, for consumers in a variety of retail formats. That's the idea and we're excited about it. And hopefully uh, we'll find some insights that we can share with retailers about, um, you know, what drives purchasing behavior for 20 year olds. And I think we all have a lot to learn on that subject. I think retailers will die to know how we can satisfy, you know, what the 20-year-olds are looking for and how we can best, best satisfy them. And like many um, of our U of A students, um, I was the first in, in, in my family and the only in my large family to actually go to college. Uh, and so it was a privilege for me to be able to come to the University of Arizona. And I had no idea what a career in retail uh, might look like when I was uh, 20 years old or uh, how it might shape my own future. Uh, but with investments through the Fuel Wonder campaign, we hope to educate our, our students and expose them to you know, successful business leaders, as, as Alex mentioned, and ultimately prepare them uh, for an exciting career. Uh, we already attract a very capable and determined and hungry student body here at the University of Arizona. And if we can, you know, collectively create learning opportunities like the one that I've, I've just described, there's absolutely no limit to uh, what they can accomplish. I look forward to that. Uh, what a great way, Terry, though, to use your capabilities and contribute in the way you have to impact the lives of other people who are like you, you know, young people coming to college for the first time. It's really cool to see that space. Um, Marianne, I know um, how important it is for you to impact children, especially help children here in Arizona, and you guys have done so much of that through the Steel Foundation. Um, under your leadership and the leadership of your dear, dear father, who is probably looking down today, I'm so proud of you and all that you're accomplishing um, with the Steel Foundation. Some of the areas that you guys have impacted are insane. Law, humanities, nursing, agriculture, veterinary medicine, and of course, the Steel Research Center. So tell us about the Steel Foundation's most recent gift, which we were all really excited and proud of. Um, tell us a little bit about that and this campaign and your involvement. Thank you, Alex. First of all, if Alex and I, you told us 30 years ago we'd be sitting up here, <laughs> would have been a good one. I mean, there's not, it's just mind blowing. But anyway, what an opportunity and a launch pad for us both. So I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I took on this role to give back to a campus that really did change my whole family's life. Um, my dad came here when there was 4,000 students in 1948. And he um, was the first generation Italian American, uh, both college and law school graduate here at U of A. So when Bobby talks a lot about the student experience, I cannot overstate the impact of the student experience way back even in the 40s um, that it had on my father and for myself in the 90s. So I feel very, very lucky to be here and thank you for joining us. Um, my father created the Steel Foundation in addition to a 60 plus career in the law in Arizona and he did it to give back to the community that he loved dearly. Our mission is to make investments in the state of Arizona that improve children's lives, specifically through the lens of education. So when I heard about this campaign, I really couldn't think of a better way to represent our foundation than being a part of it. So I'm really, really honored to be here. So the moonshot for us, for the Steel Foundation um, this year, uh, it, we couldn't come up with a longer name, so bear with me. Um, upon my father's passing, he died in uh, June of 2022, and we quickly knew that the best way to honor him was to do something to, with our crowning achievement, Steel Children's Research Center. So the foundation um, honored his life with a $10 million grant to fuel some wonder. Um, this created the Daniel Cracciolo Institute for Pediatric Autoimmune Disease Research. This will be based at Steel Children's. Once it's established here in Tucson, uh, we will open a second institute within CAMI up in Phoenix. So we are very, very thrilled about this honor for him. Having the DC Institute based in CAMI, and for all of us who live in Phoenix, it's a big deal. It's a huge honor to have a huge imprint for the U of A right in downtown Phoenix and, and just increase that footprint. It means it's a tremendous honor for the foundation to be a part of it. And um, it is definitely one of those big ideas that Dr. Robbins talks about so, so frequently. So the goal with CAMI is to develop cell and gene-based therapies to combat disease, this time to unlock the human immunome, um, not just for one person in a clinical trial, but for numerous others, for anyone who needs it. 
So for us, this is what we would call at Steel Foundation, a definitely a moonshot um, after COVID-19, especially the immunome. It's time, it's time, it's perfect timing for this. We're really, really thrilled. So in essence, I'm in awe of everything that's happening here. I can't believe what you've accomplished between environmental resilience, space exploration, retail. Uh, it, it just, it's all happening here. Even the quantum internet, which I'm still not quite sure what that is, but I'm sure I'll figure that out <laughs> with Dr. Robin's help sometime. Um, but anyway, it's really excited to be here, Alex, and that's why I agreed, all those reasons are why I agreed to be up here today. Well, awesome. It sounds like, um, as you guys just heard, this campaign is already off to a really great start, but I understand we have some exciting announcements to add to their announcements. Bobby, why don't you tell us? I'm not sure what I'm supposed <laughs> to say now. I, better look. I think we have some gifts oh, to I announce, see. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you'll hear, you'll hear about them uh, later this morning. Okay. I, I didn't want to, uh, so I'm not specifically naming them. I'm just going to tell you, you're going to hear about uh, recent $120 million yes. worth of gifts that, uh, nice. that, uh, has, that has come in right around the campaign. Uh, I, I will remind everyone, we still have a billion dollars to go, so it's not yeah. too late. And <laughs> yeah. the beauty of this is that um, I think by going public with this and uh, seeing all of the great support and the testimonials of what you've all done for us and what so many of you have done, it's going to inspire others to join because people want to be part of a winning team. Uh, and, and I think, you know, I don't know where J oh, I see JP's back there. But uh, as I said last night, uh, I, would, I would love to uh, hit the $4 billion mark, but we're going to say $3 billion <laughs> right now. I know we'll exceed that because we're wild. You still wild. have a lot of work to do in front of you, though, so you got a billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm billion. confident. I'm <laughs> confident because there's so many... Uh, inspiring stories and so many inspiring projects like Cami and other things that um, that I think will get people excited about giving. All right, so um, on that note, let's learn a little bit more about that. And we have a video to show you guys, so take a look. Hi, I'm Casey Arquiles, and on behalf of the University of Arizona, I am thrilled to announce 27.35 million in gifts benefiting our incredible students. Pat and Bruce Bartlett have given 2.5 million to the Salt Center. The Bartlett's are longtime champions of the university and the Salt Center, which provides services to students with learning and attention challenges. The Baird Foundation has given 5.7 million to support outstanding high school graduates from Arizona to pursue their undergraduate education. Jim and Vicki Click, longtime supporters and champions of the University of Arizona Adaptive Athletics Program, have committed a $6.5 million gift. Adding to their generous investments to the program, this gift will fuel the program's ability to recruit elite athletes well into the future. John L. Compton has committed $3.2 million to the W.A. Frankie Honors College, which will support honor student research projects. John and Adrian Mars' $2 million gift to the College of Science will fund scholarships, first-year career exploration, and undergraduate research. And last but not least, a Wildcat family wishing to remain anonymous has contributed $5.95 million to support Arizona athletics, specifically CATS Academics and the 5980 Fund. They also gave $1.5 million to support Destination Arizona. This one is especially close to my heart, as Destination Arizona is a new student experience helping Wildcats find their place in our community. These numbers sound big, and they are, but every one of these gifts also touches the life of an individual student. As the Chief Enrollment Officer, I see the impact of gifts like this every day. A scholarship can make all the difference. This year, we enrolled 12,463 new first year and transfer students, representing every state and countries throughout the world. This is the most diverse class in our history, and it also includes a record number of Arizona high school graduates. I'm very proud of the work that we do to attract such strong students, and I'm grateful for the role of philanthropy in empowering the Wildcat journey. Thank you to everyone who has made a gift supporting our students, and to everyone who's come back for homecoming. Bear down. Yay, bear down. All right, well. <laughs> Back on the stage now, joined by uh, J.P. Rosniak, and one of those students here as well, Jaden Singh, 
Um, you know, on a personal note, the Salt Center uh, benefited my husband, Kevin Flanagan, who played basketball here uh, back in the early 90s, and I know it was a very impactful um, thing to his education, and also a dear friend of mine in San Diego uh, just sent her son, who's a freshman here, and they chose the University of Arizona because of the Salt Center. So cool, very cool to see the impact that it's had over so many years. So JP, um, we just heard about that, a lot of money, $27 million in gifts that will benefit students in some really unique and impactful ways. It, it is because, I mean, people give with their hearts and they give into areas where they're passionate about and they the, the areas they care about. And the one thing I can say is our donors have stepped up to support our, studer, our students. They love to see their stu the students here have those opportunities that they had. They want to make sure they have the opportunity to be successful go off and launch their careers. So it's truly a blessing what the people do for us here at the University of Arizona. And you know, one of those gifts that we talked about was Jim and Vicki Click's gift to adaptive athletics. They're not here today, but you can see the impact. Look at all the young people here from our adaptive athletics program. That gift is going to ch help change their lives. And Joey's here, who works for Mr. Click, came through our adaptive athletics program, and now he's the head salesperson for all of Click Automotive. It's truly an amazing story, and we're just grateful that you can be with us here tonight. And then speaking of the Bartlett's, Pat and Bruce, I know you're over here as well. Their son graduated from the U of A, and it was with the help of the Salt Center. Their son moved off from the campus to start his career, and Pat and Bruce moved into the University of Arizona. They've <laughs> been with us all the way, and what the Salt Center's done for this university is truly amazing. It transforms lives. It makes a huge difference in people's everything they do. And lastly, the Baird Foundation. Baird Foundation has given over $15 million to the university at, the honor, at our Frankie's Honor College. It goes directly to supporting students and scholarships. And we're lucky to have Jaden here today to talk a little bit about it. So Jaden. Yeah, Jaden, thanks for being patient and listening to all this. <laughs> I know you have a lot on your plate. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about um, what it's like to be a, a Baird Scholar in your family. Yeah, my name is Jane Singh. Um, I'm a very proud Honors Wildcat. <laughs> um, and I'm a student here studying public health and law at the University of Arizona. I'm entering my senior year. I'm a former AmeriCorps service member, and um, I'm super excited to be here. Um, being awarded with the, the Baird Scholarship my senior year of high school is really an honor, and it's been a really great experience for me so far. And tell me a little bit more about your family, because I understand you're not the only Baird Scholar in your family. Is that right? Yes. Um, two years after me, my sister, who is now a sophomore, Sophie, also in the Honors College, um, also received the Baird Scholarship. And uh, don't tell our parents, but she called me first. And it was <laughs> so, I was, I was just as excited as I was um, when I got it to know that she would have the same experience to get to come here to the University of Arizona. And, um, we got to spend a couple of years here together before I graduated. It's so cool to have you here because I think you really put a face to all this giving and you're the person that actually is the beneficiary of it, is making an impact. Tell us a little bit about what you'd like to say to some of the people out there that are gifting this money and that are making an impact for people like yourself. Yeah, firstly, of course, I just want to say thank you. Uh, that doesn't seem like enough, but I'm so grateful and the, these scholarships really open doors. They open doors for me, for my sister, for all the other Baird scholars, and all the recipients of this funding. It really makes a huge difference, and it's given me the opportunity to explore my interests and my identity here in Tucson, learning in a community that I've learned to love. So thank you. Where are we going to see you in 10, 15, 20 years? What company are you going to be running? What are you going to be doing? <laughs> the hope is that next year I'll be attending law school. Um, I'd love to be practicing health law down the line and um, health law and policy and helping protect folks in our community from um, any 
any threats to their health that they might not even know exist. So really looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, we need great academics like you, and congratulations, and um, good luck with all of your um, studies ahead. Appreciate it. All right. So as President Robin said, the Fuel Wonder campaign is also about research. So let's hear about the gifts supporting faculty. Hello, I'm Elliot Chu, and on behalf of the University of Arizona, I am honored to announce $36.5 million in gifts benefiting faculty and research at the University of Arizona. First, alumni Michael and Sherry Hummel of the class of 82 have committed $5 million benefiting the Cancer Engineering Initiative and Research at the College of Medicine, Tucson, in the area of gynecological cancer research. The Cancer Engineering Initiative is an incredible partnership between the College of Engineering and the Cancer Center that aims to improve the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of cancers. Alumni Humberto Lopez and his wife, Sarina, have committed $9 million to enhance business analytics education at the Allard College of Management. They also created an endowed chair at the College of Medicine, Tucson, named for their daughter, Giovanna C. Lopez. The Lopez's have been very generous to the university across multiple areas, especially during this campaign. John and Adrian Mars, who are also supporting students at the University of Arizona, have given $2 million to support agrivoltaics research at Biosphere 2. The Waverly Street Foundation, which aims to advance community-based climate solutions, has given $2 million to benefit the Indigenous Resilience Center headed by Carletta Chief. Some of our generous donors who prefer to remain anonymous have also given transformational gifts. One Wildcat family has given $6.5 million to support endowed faculty chairs in finance at the LR College of Management. Another family has given $4 million to endow a postdoctoral research associate in climate change and human resiliency. The first recipient, Dr. Magda Garbowski, has already arrived on campus and has begun her work in dryland ecology in the Southwest. The University of Arizona is ranked among the best research universities in the country with annual research expenditures of $824 million. We are a leader in space sciences, as you'll know from the OSIRIS-REx mission and the James Webb Space Telescope. But the university is also among the best in the world in areas including the environment, health, quantum advances, and national security. Private philanthropy is essential to the university's research mission. Endowed chairs help us to attract and retain the best faculty and additional research investments can underwrite the cost of equipment, data sets, graduate student assistance, and so much more. On behalf of the university, thank you to everyone who has given to advanced research on campus. Through your investments, you are part of groundbreaking work that will overcome complex challenges and improve the life for all. Bear down, go Cats. <laughs> So I'm thrilled, um, I'm kind of having a lot of full circle moments here this weekend, but I'm thrilled to welcome Humberto Lopez to the stage. His daughter, Yovana, was my college roommate here at the University of Arizona for a few years, and um, also attended South Point Catholic High School with me here in Tucson. And um, I spent, uh, growing up in Sonoida, I often needed a place to stay, um, driving into Tucson, and so the Lopez's home was a second home to me. So um, near and dear to my heart, both Mr. and Mrs. Lopez and your family, and I'm so excited to get to sit up here and do this um, with you. And we heard about your donation and JP, $36 million. Tell us a little bit more about the impact of that money. Well, when people fund faculty and research at the University of Arizona, not only transforms this institution, but think what comes out of it. We find cures to disease. We're able to create new products that help people change their lives. It's, it touches everybody. And it's truly amazing when people make those investments because not all of them will play out the way they thought it was going to go. But they believe in those individuals. They believe in the mission of the institution. And we're here ultimately to help people. And that's what these gifts have done. So it's truly amazing when Sherry and Mike Hummel decide to make an investment in our cancer research, our cancer engineering program. Just think five, ten years from now what those discoveries are going to do. It's going to change people's lives, especially in the area of cancer for, that impact women. So we're truly thankful for everything you've done. And then when you sit and think about Burton's Arena, every time the university, we need something or there's something big going on at the university, Burton's Arena are one of the first people we always call. They've touched multiple areas on this campus. 
from the Eller College to the Andrew Weil Center, the Dolly Wall, Reedy uh, School of Accountancy. They just continue to give and they're changing this community, not only here at the university, but I also want to recognize the work that Bert's done in this community yeah. with the Center of Opportunity. <clears throat> he is changing countless lives by helping our homeless and people with addiction. And we are blessed to have this couple here in our town. Well, I was really excited to read a little bit more about Bert and find out some things that I didn't know, that you were a graduate of the University of Arizona. You graduated with an accounting degree from what's now the Eller College of Management. Um, you obviously are an incredibly successful businessman. You have been for a long, long time. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story and kind of coming here and the impact that this university had on you as a young man and how you got here. Well, I was not supposed to come to college. My counselor, um, well, let me go back a little bit. Uh, I grew up in Mexico. I came to the States at the age of 12. Uh, while in Mexico, uh, my uh, family was very comfortable. My father was a, a farmer, agriculture, uh, cow. We, we, we had a ranch. So we lived very comfortably. Uh, he passed away. My mother moved back to the States because she was, had, was born in Galas. And uh, I was the oldest of six. Uh, my youngest uh, sister was one and a half. I was uh, 11, 12 years old at the time. Uh, all of a sudden, we find ourselves um, having to uh, depend on welfare. Um, so, my, when uh, back in those days, they used to give you the food. You used to go to yeah. welfare and you walk out with these boxes of food. Same thing every month. <laughs> uh, we, we ate uh, the same food for years. Uh, but one day I told my mother, she was very embarrassed while waiting in line. I told mom, one day I'm going to take care of you. Uh, so I uh, graduated from high school. My counselor um, advised that it was not college material. Uh, so I didn't come to university directly. I didn't go around about. So I went to Cochise College and got my um, AA degree. Uh, took 18 credits every semester. Uh, I didn't know what 18 credits was and how hard they were. But um, <laughs> I had a good work ethic. Uh, from the age of 12 when I started working and uh, through high school, I don't know how I ever, and the, the template was absolutely correct, that it was not college material. I, I was a C student. I uh, go to school from 8 to 3, from 3 to 10.30 at night. Uh, I'd uh, work at a grocery store six days a week, putting in 40, 44 hours a, a week of work. Uh, so I don't know how, I, I can't remember ever doing any homework. Uh, <laughs> you Honestly, learned on the job. I, I so, uh, so consequently, I ended up going to Cochise College, graduated in two years. So it, uh, and when, I, I, when I went to college, I treated it as work, putting at least eight hours of, of uh, work every day, uh, going to classes in the morning, being in the library the, the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the afternoon and sometimes in the evenings. I uh, worked for my meals at, at lunch mm. and uh, at dinner. Uh, transferred to the university. I uh, continued with 18 credits. I graduated two years later with 144 credits. And I probably could have graduated a little sooner than that, but uh, uh, I didn't know I could, uh, could have graduated any sooner. <laughs> <laughs> you were enjoying yourself. And I did, uh, when I came to the States, uh, I was held back. So I, I repeated the fifth, the fifth grade. I couldn't speak English. Uh, wow. So anyway, I, I um, graduated from the University of Arizona. I didn't know what the career was going to follow, but I knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur someday. Uh, so I ended up uh, taking accounting classes, and those came very natural to me, and where I was getting A's in accounting. I uh, interviewed with all the big eight at the time, and I uh, got offers from every single one of them. I nerved the furthest I've been from the gallows was Tucson, and uh, they flew me to Los Angeles. Uh, first class, a number of trips out there with all the big eight. Uh, wow. Got offers, and I ended up going with uh, Deloitte. Spent five and a half years with them. Uh, I read a book, How to Turn a Million Dollars, a thousand dollars into a million dollars, uh, in 1971. I borrowed a thousand dollars from my uncle, and uh, before I knew it, uh, by 1979, I turned a thousand dollars, by 1980, I'm sorry, a thousand dollars into 13 million dollars. Uh, wow. Is there a course on that at the U of A? You know, <laughs> and I. I I worked very hard all my life. So there's come, you, you, the combination is going to be hard work and education. Yeah. There's no substitute for it. 
you can have a great education, but if you're lazy, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, and you can work very hard, but don't have an education, it's very hard yeah. to move on life. You have move, to have move the move opportunity. So, so that combination to me has been great. I'm very grateful to the University of Arizona. Uh, I uh, consequently, I, I owe what I've got a lot to the university, and that's the reason. And by the way, I don't know who's keeping track of $36 million. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, before the campaign is over, we'll get it up to $50 million. So. I like that. Yes, okay. let's get it growing. <laughs> Well, um, I think the Lopez's, as you can hear in your story, I think you connect with a lot of the students and, and their journey because you went through it. So you understand what it's like and you understand how important it is to have that opportunity and how impactful an education can be and how it can change a life like it, like it did yours to set you up for success and to set you up for those uh, type of things. And I know that um, you and Serena, you're focused on philanthropy as well, as JP said, in the community through the HS Lopez Foundation family foundation and um, through your foundation you've um, worked on helping homeless people um, become self-sufficient and you've invested in higher educating higher education supporting really so many areas at the university um, so we want to thank you for sharing your story bird it was so cool to kind of read about all of that because I didn't know a lot of it and um, it's such a pleasure for me to reconnect with you and, and mrs. Lopez and see her last night and get my arms around her um, so on that note, we have another announcement to make um, benefiting Arizona Public Media. So we're gonna now roll that video. Thank you, good job. Thank you. Welcome to the future of public media in Southern Arizona. Located on the corner of Kino Parkway and 36th Street at the University of Arizona Tech Park at the Bridges and just three and a half miles south of the main campus, the new Paul and Alice Baker Center for Public Media will be home to AZPM, Southern Arizona's most trusted source of news, information, entertainment, and educational public media programming. The first floor of the Baker Center will feature most of AZPM's radio, television, and digital production spaces, including a 5,000-square-foot television production studio with retractable theater seating. While the centerpiece of the second floor will be the new state-of-the-art 30-seat newsroom, enabling AZPM's award-winning journalists and reporters to cover Southern Arizona and the entire state like never before bringing the fair and balanced reporting to our region that the community has come to expect from EZPM. So we're joined now by Jack, Jack Gibson, the CEO of AZPM, and we just heard about the incredible new facility that you are looking to build. And this one's kind of near and dear to my heart as a, a media arts major, which is what we called kind of the TV major back in the day. Right. Um, tell us more about uh, this exciting project. So Alex, for nearly 60 years, um, AZPM, KUAT Channel 6 and NPR have been housed in the basement, sub-basement, of a classroom building on campus, the Modern Languages Building, that was originally designed to house one instructional television station. I was reminded of that recently in a tour of the, the studio with some donors, and sticking out of the wall were three spigots, air, natural gas, and water. And it's like, what, what's that doing in a television studio? But it reminded me that back in the day when that facility was built, chemistry courses were offered and oh, televised wow. from that space, so it was very natural for them to be there. Fast forward to today, AZPM operates three television services, four public radio services, and digital services. In addition to the original production we do for television, radio, and a lot of um, podcast production currently. Our physical space simply hasn't kept up with the growth of the organization. And um, we still occupy that same about 20,000 square foot uh, footprint. And the time has come to invest in a facility to better serve the needs of the university, the students that we train as interns and apprentices at uh, ACPM, and for the community um, for generations to come. Yeah, it's um, definitely working in the industry. It is one of those industries where you can only learn so much, really, um, from reading and from a book. Right. You have to have that hands-on experience. So you really need the equipment and, and the modernization of a studio and whatnot to be able to do that. So how close are you to your goal? We are so close. We are 84% funded of a 100% donor-funded project. The project is a $65 million capital campaign. And we're about $10.2 million from concluding that campaign. And I couldn't be more grateful for the leadership uh, contributors 
who have stepped up and really taken this project from conception to a groundbreaking that will happen in February of uh, next year. A special thanks to Paul and Alice Baker for their seminal um, funding of this project. Really took it from the idea uh, phase into operation. The facility will bear their name, the Baker Center for Public Media at the UA Tech Park at the Bridges. Uh, long title, but uh, we'll work on that. Other donors um, include um, Ellen Kay and the Maltz Family Foundation, significant contributors to this project. The Tucson Foundations through the George M. and Lois C. Green Foundation, the Couts Family Foundation, Mona Creer, Paul Lipton, and literally hundreds of AZPM viewers and listeners have contributed specifically to this capital campaign above and beyond about $9 million we raise annually just to operate the stations. So we've got about $10 million to go, and there's still time to be a part of this important campaign, so I encourage you to get online soon. Okay, we got to call on some of our TV friends out there and get, right. them to, get them to get us over the, uh, over the bump there. Well, um, thank you, Jack, and congratulations on the progress. Can't wait to follow it and to see um, all of the great um, TV and media arts journalists that are going to come out of the University of Arizona like they always have. Got to beat ASU on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, in just a moment, we're going to open the floor up if you all have any questions, so think of them now. But... First, it's homecoming, obviously, and we have a big game um, coming up on Saturday. So here's a message from our athletic director, Dave Heakey. Hi, I'm Dave Heakey, Vice President and Director of Athletics. I want to welcome everyone back for homecoming. This is a special time of the year. So good to have you back on campus. Uh, you know, ho homecoming is uh, the time we renew friendships and uh, remember the great times of being here at the University of Arizona. It's also a great opportunity we have this year to kick off the Fuel Wonder campaign, uh, a chance to celebrate all the ways our community and our alumni give back. You know, we're really grateful to the numerous donors who have invested in intercollegiate athletics here at the University of Arizona. In this campaign, for instance, including Cole and Jeannie Davis for their support of the indoor sports complex, uh, everyone who has supported our wonderful new golf center, the William M. Bill Clements Golf Center, including Jenny Clements, Peter and Nancy Salter, Jim Furyk and his wife Tabitha, the Thunderbirds, Umberto and Zarina Lopez, Jim and Vicky Click, Tim and Jane Garrigan, Brian and Chris Hogan, and Tom and Joanne Cabado. I also want to extend a special thank you to our anonymous Wildcat family members, alums that supported the 5980 Fund and the CATS Academics Unit. Well, the 5980 Fund and certainly our CATS academic program are really essential to intercollegiate athletics and to our student athletes. Um, it's about really a new opportunity and enhancing the opportunities for our students through resources that they can uh, have to improve their academic experience, but are also centered around that academic experience. Um, and the overall goal of producing academic, athletic, and really life champions. Uh, that's what we're about here at the University of Arizona. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce Ali Skaggs, senior second baseman from our softball program, uh, the 2023 Golden Glove Award winner, 2023 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, first team academic All-American, an all-Pac-12 team selection. The Coaches Association voted her an All-American, and she's an outstanding student athlete on our campus, being a member of our Student Athlete Advisory Committee and serving as our co-president this year. Hi, I'm Ali Skaggs, senior second baseman for the University of Arizona softball team. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I am studying journalism. Personally, and my teammates as well, the 5980 Fund has been such a great safety net for us. I think that as a student athlete, we're all super busy. It's hard for us to get out and find time to find jobs and fund ourselves, essentially. And so just having this extra cushion to kind of fall back on, use what we need for gas, for food, for groceries, things that we typically aren't making money for on the side for ourselves, um, it's been such a, such a great thing for us. So both of my parents are actually U of A alum. So they graduated in 94 and 95. They were born and raised Tucson. Um, they both went to Flowing Wells High School. They met there. Both went to U of A, graduated from here. And so I grew up kind of around the U of A. 
I actually was raised in Louisville, Kentucky, so my parents and I, we moved out there when I was really young, and I lived there till I was 18, so I was always in Louisville, but we'd come visit Tucson quite a bit. So we were back uh, a couple times a year, and my family could come watch me play when I was at camps for the U of A softball. I ended up getting recruited at one of those camps that my family would come watch me play at. And uh, since then, I committed when I was a sophomore to play here. So getting to play here, it's been a really cool legacy just to go play in front of my family, in front of my parents' friends from growing up. It's been a really, really big honor for me to kind of represent the Wildcats like my parents did as well. Well, thanks again for all of you for coming out and supporting the Cats this homecoming weekend. It's a special time to be on campus. We appreciate all of your support. Bear down and go Cats. Yay. <laughs> So awesome to see the uh, softball legacy continue here. We've been such a strong and powerful school at that sport. So proud of it uh, to see it represented. So back on the stage with you guys for some questions now, if you have any, JP, Bobby, Marianne, and Terry, um, if you guys want to ask any more questions about the Fuel Wonder campaign, um, some information that you need to know, how you can get involved, um, fire away. I think we have a microphone that's um, going around. So if you have your, uh, yes, raise your hand, we'll bring you the mic and please start us off. Good morning. There we go. So Dr. Robbins, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about CAMI as Marianne mentioned it and how she and others in Phoenix are excited about it. And in particular, as a physician, if you could tell us why you're excited about this research. Well, first, uh, I'd like to start off by saying I'm so inspired by all the stories that we heard last night and that we've heard today. It's, it's just tremendous. And I could go on for days talking about every day I walk around this campus, I'm in my seventh year, I find something new, exciting that inspires me. So I, I'm blessed to be here and, and be a part of this. Cami in particular um, is an idea that uh, when... I look back for the last 25 years, probably the most profound transformative thing that has happened in human health and wellness is the mapping of the human genome. Um, certainly the University of Arizona has been a big part of that. Uh, we have the All of Us uh, uh, grant that uh, was won from the NIH for $60 million to genotype uh, individuals across uh, the state in our region. And we're a very diverse state, and uh, we're the highest enrolling uh, center in the nation. And you think about all the things across the country and all the great medical uh, institutions across this country and around the world, and we're right there in the lead on the genomic side. Um, as I look forward to the next 25 years, I think, uh, I'm not even sure if this is a, a word, but um, the human immunome is gonna be something over the next uh, 25 to 50 years, 100 years, that I think we understand just the very tip of the tip of the iceberg about how our immune function uh, uh, is, is part of uh, determining our health. And there, the CAMI is something that we strategically located uh, in Phoenix because there's great opportunity that's where the largest population in our state is. It's the fastest uh, growing city in the country, now the fifth largest, probably soon to be the fourth largest. And you can see a lot of things that are coming in, especially around uh, the semiconductor uh, industry, uh, autonomous vehicle, battery storage. Um, we talked about uh, uh, quantum. We're one of the leading right down the street here from uh, Bear Down Building is the College of Optical Sciences, and I know, Terry, when I first met you, I talked a lot about optical sciences, um, but of course, retail and... Uh, Don't forget retail. Yeah, retail is, <laughs> is very important, but if you just go right down the street, you'll see a building coming out of the ground called the Grand Challenges Building, and we're incredibly appreciative for, to Jim Wyatt, who uh, was a dean of that uh, college. It started out as a center. Uh, and then in, uh, evolved into a, a college. And they are on the cutting edge of uh, everything optical science, which includes uh, quantum networking. We've got a $50 million National Science Foundation grant that, uh, that the uh, uh, Sekat Gua won as a principal investigator, and it's really gonna change all of our lives. Uh, the quantum uh, energy will, 
will provide uh, energy for cell phones. And if you think, if you go back and think about the investment the federal government made uh, in the internet uh, and how that's changed all of our lives, quantum is going to be a force multiplier and it's going to be faster, more efficient, and it'll, it'll change how we all uh, live our daily lives. And also in um, artificial intelligence and how health will be determined. So specifically about CAMI, it's the Center for Advanced Molecular and Immunological Therapies. Um, if you think about your immune system, there, there are four or five different areas that we'll focus on in building CAMI, and we're incredibly grateful to Governor Ducey for providing $150 million in uh, seed startup money, and we're out trying to raise money for CAMI. And if you think just, uh, you know, I could go on for hours about this, so I'll try to, I'm better at telling a, uh, making a short story long than a long story short. <laughs> this is one of those big transformative moonshot ideas about how uh, your immune system affects uh, cancer therapies. Uh, if you look uh, at what's going on with immunotherapy and cancers, um, Jim Allison at MD Anderson in 2017 won the Nobel Prize for immunotherapies, and it's becoming state-of-the-art treatment uh, for cancer. If you think about a tumor and genotyping, going back to the Human Genome Project, uh, how you can uh, genotype a tumor and derive uh, immunological therapies that will be truly personalized to that tumor and your whole uh, genetic makeup and how those therapies can be effective. Um, thinking about how your immune system overreacts to your own body's tissue, that's called autoimmunity. Uh, and you think about diabetes, one, you know, if I had to, uh, still cardiovascular disease and cancer are the biggest killers uh, of, uh, of humans, um, but diabetes is so important and understanding how that can affect cancer, can affect cardiovascular disease, and just the daily uh, burden of uh, having to take insulin and, and manage insulin. So autoimmunity is another big area. I can think of other things, lupus, uh, scleroderma, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Then inflammation um, is the single it's immune mediated process in your body. Uh, that uh, is a big determinant of cardiovascular diseases. Uh, also, it's uh, becoming clear that it's the central uh, process around dementia, Alzheimer's disease. So inflammation would be the, uh, the, the third area. And, and it's becoming clear that, um, that the immune system is a determinant of how you age. Uh, so aging is another big part. And, and then the, the last area that I, I would mention is pretty obvious, having come off the pandemic, is infectious diseases. And uh, after this press conference, there's, I want you to all stick around because there's been be a little fireside chat with someone you may have heard of around uh, valley fever. Uh, so thinking about how we could uh, be a world leader, and we will be a true world leader with this, uh, with this center that, that's being uh, um, developed it at our Phoenix Biomedical Hub mm -hmm. in, in uh, uh, Phoenix Biomedical uh, Core at, at, at Phoenix. So uh, we need support. We need support to uh, hire the world's greatest immunologists and, and uh, researchers and physicians, bring students, and also uh, to have spinoff companies attract um, uh, startup companies, large multinational companies that will support this effort to to try to uh, to learn more about the human immunome and how that may affect uh, human health in the future. Wow, a lot of um, amazing work. I'll use Marianne's word in awe of all of that because um, not only a lot of work but a lot of important work that certainly is going to be impactful in the state of Arizona and, and at this university. Thank you for all of that information and explanation. Any other questions out there? Do we have anybody else that has a mic in their hand that would like to ask something? I think we have one more. But, but before you ask your question, uh, one other thing, uh, having spent 30 years uh, perturbing people's immune system with organ transplantation and 
and Bert uh, knows all about this too well, um, but there are organ transplants that are done uh, every day in this country for life-saving diseases like heart failure and renal failure, liver failure. Um, and so that's another important thing. We, we don't really understand um, how the immune system reacts. We've got these drugs that uh, cyclosporin, steroids, and other things that, um, that suppress the immune system so that your body doesn't uh, reject this foreign tissue. Um, and one of the things that none of us know, you can't go to any doctor anywhere in the world and say, how is my immune status today? Um, because there are no tests for that. So CAMI will also have an immune uh, monitoring core that will understand better uh, how, to, uh, how your immune system is functioning at this moment in time. Obviously, uh, there are things that you need to do every day. You need to uh, get enough sleep. You need to manage your stress. You need to exercise. Uh, don't smoke. Don't ever smoke. Probably the worst thing you could probably do to your body. Um, and, and so you know that if you do all of those bad things that you, you don't feel as well and you're more susceptible to infection uh, and I would say cancer as well because um, we all have uh, over the course of our lives small cancers that develop in our body and our immune system can track them down and kill them before we ever know. So having this immune functioning core is something that I think is uh, is needed and we're going to take the, the global lead on doing these kind of things at CAMI. Super exciting. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Dr. Robbins, uh, at last night's event, uh, Olivia Miller talked about the new UAMA, Museum of Art, and I would like to hear your thoughts on why that is important for the community, the campus community, as well as Tucson. Well, I, um, again, I, it, it, that that stimulates so many neurotransmitters for me to go on and tell <laughs> the whole story that uh, Olivia told last night about the de Kooning. Uh, she talked about the de Kooning painting. Uh, uh, being stolen. Being and then, stolen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to say that uh, it was on it was loan. Borrowed. It, was <laughs> it was on loan to a family in Silver, cut uh, it out and borrowed Silver it. City, New Mexico for 32 years. They loved this painting so much. I mean, I th you know, they didn't sell it. They tacked it on the back of their bathroom door so every day they could look at it and just admire it. Luckily, we got it back. Uh, I was playing golf with JP and, and Bert, and my cell phone rang, the second call I've ever gotten from the FBI. It's like 60 minutes, Alex. When they show up, <laughs> It does sound like a good happens. 60 minute story. I think yeah, yeah. Well yeah there was one. a 60 minute story, but uh, I got a call from the FBI to say, we found your painting. And, uh, that, that's just a tremendous uh, story. But uh, there's a prominent individual who, who called me up probably in the first three months I was here and said, you don't know who I am, but uh, I want to meet you. Meet me in the library or that big room at Arizona Inn. I want to talk to you about um, that you have the one of the best uh, art collections of any university that I've seen uh, in the country and you have one of the worst buildings to house that incredible collection. <laughs> yep. So uh, we started a conversation about we need to have a state of the art, as Olivia said last night, uh, building to house the incredible mm -hmm. art collection we have at this university so that the public can take mm -hmm. advantage of it. So I, that's, uh, you know, as part of this campaign, we talk about students, we talk about support of faculty members, which is tremendously important because it's a, our most important asset is our faculty because they attract students to come here to study with them and they also discover new knowledge and then translate those discoveries into, into commercializable products that make our world a better place and our daily lives better. So uh, also the, I talk about the front porches of this university. It's our, uh, the way, the portal in which the community and and our loyal Wildcats for Life uh, come back to connect with the university. And that's through the arts and athletics. You heard from Dave Hickey and Ali Skaggs, who is just a tre tremendous softball player, but even better student and person uh, who will go on to do great things, I'm very sure. But uh, with regard to the arts, there are many things that uh, we're focusing on in this campaign uh, around the arts. The, the, the art museum is one of them. Um, 
I think everybody, you know, there are people who come up to me every time, every uh, so often and tell me, you know, I took one of my classes in Centennial Hall. There used to be classes in, Cine in Cine Centennial Hall, and it's a historic great building. It needs a complete overhaul, a redo. And, and so those are the kind of big things, the dance program last night, uh, again, you know, it's not bragging if it's true. We're the number one dance program in the country. And for those who got to see uh, uh, some of our dancers last night and the incredible uh, Stevie Eller Dance Theater that we have on campus, the, the arts are so important uh, to, um, to our university, to, uh, to the connection to the outside world, not only the people who love the university, but people in uh, southern Arizona and around the world. There are people who come from all over the world to take advantage of the incredible collection of photography we, they, that we have in the Center for Creative Photography. So um, that was uh, a vision of John Schaefer, who was the most transformational president in the university's history. John's still around. He'll be at the football game. I'm, I'm not sure, Terry, that he doesn't have a... A, a headset and he calls plays to jet occasionally. <laughs> but John, John uh, had the idea of creating the Center for Creative Photography uh, and convinced a guy you may have heard of, Ansel Adams, hmm. to store his entire collection. We have every original wow. uh, Ansel Adams print in Maybe. the Center for Creative Photography and other great photographers, including uh, David Kennerly. So the arts are very important and we're really focused on getting a new art museum. Yeah. Well, the assets that you have here at the university and the things that you're building and working on are going to be such an asset, not only to the students here, but as you just said, to Tucsonans and Southern Arizona people and the entire state and um, people like myself living in another state can be proud and brag about the great state of Arizona and the University of Arizona. So thank you all for joining us. It's been such a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, for more information on the campaign, you can log on and um, it's Fuel Wonder dot arizona dot edu if you want to find out more about the fuel wonder campaign we're getting close but obviously still have a ways to go so any way you can help um, will be greatly appreciated and needed and and thank you all so much it's so great bear down and, and go cats right bear down Sure, people stay. Yeah, uh, yeah. so.